بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم دس از ڈاکٹر ہوری عامر ہیڈ آف فزیولوجی ڈپارٹمنٹ فیصل آباد میڈیکل یونیورسٹی ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو لرن اباؤٹ سیری بیلم نا واٹ از سیری بیلم واٹ آر اٹس موٹر فنکشنس وی آر گوئنگ ٹو لرن اباؤٹ دیم ان ڈیٹیل The cerebellum plays major roles in the timing of motor activities and in rapid smooth progression from one muscle movement to the next. So you can see that the smoothness between the different movements, the alternation of movements, the timing of motor activities, the rhythm of motor movements, they are, they are all attributed to the cerebellum. It helps to control the intensity of muscle contraction as well. When the muscle load changes and controls the necessary instantaneous interplay between agonist and antagonist muscle groups. And it is actually one of the silent area of the brain. The cerebellum is essentially, especially vital during the rapid muscular activities like running, typing, playing the piano and talking. So it is actually very important regarding to maintain the rhythmicity, the flow of movements, the accuracy of movements. Loss of this area of the brain can cause almost total incoordination of these activities even though its loss causes no muscle paralysis. It helps to sequence the, mo the motor activities and also monitors and makes corrective adjustments in the body's motor activities while they are being exaggerated. Confirm to the motor signals directed uh, by the cerebral motor cortex and other parts of the brain. The cerebellum also aids the cerebral cortex in planning the next sequential movement a fraction of a second in advance while the current movement is still being executed. So we can say that it is assisting the cerebral cortex in playing out the different movements, the different, uh, the accuracy of uh, different movements, the planning of the uh, sequencing of different movements. So. It is working in collaboration, in coordination, in um, antagonistic way with, that of, with the, that of the cerebral cortex. Now anatomical and different functional areas of the cerebellum. So uh, it is your homework to draw and label the diagram of uh, different areas of cerebellum. Now the cerebellum is divided into three lobes by two deep fissures. They are the anterior lobe, the posterior lobe and the flocculonodular lobe. You can see the different the fissures they are going to divide it anatomically into anterior lobe, posterior lobe and the smallest one that is the flocculonodular lobe. Now, what are the different functional parts of the cerebellum? This is also very important. The functional parts of cerebellum. You can see that the central most area, that is the vermis. Then there is intermediate zone of hemisphere. Then there is lateral zone of hemisphere. Then we have the posterior uh, lobe, right? So this is how the functional parts of the cerebellum, they are actually represented. Now let's talk, uh, let's talk about the topographical representation. Now what is it? The topographical representation is that the central most area, the vermis, is controlling the functions for muscle movement of the axial portions of body, neck, shoulder and hips. Then we have the intermediate zones. 
They are controlling the muscle contraction of the distal part of limbs, hands and fingers, feet and toes. Then we have the lateral zone joining with the cerebral cortex and it plans the sequential motor movements. These topographical representations receive afferent nerve signals from all the respective part of the body and from the corresponding topographical motor areas in the cerebral cortex and brain stem. So this is the importance of the topographical uh, representations in the cerebellum. You can see how we are going to label them and what is the topographical, topographical representation over here. Then uh, we should be knowing about the neuronal circuit of the cerebellum. Human cerebral cortex is actually a large folded shield about 17 cm wide and 120 cm long. It has folds which are lying crosswise and each fold is known as a folium. Right? And uh, the folds which are lying horizontally, crosswise, they are known as folium. And lying beneath the folded mass of cerebellar cortex are the deep cerebellar nuclei. Now we should be knowing about the input pathways uh, to the cerebellum. First one are the afferent pathways from the other parts of the body. There is presence of cortico-pontocerebellar pathway. There is olivocerebellar tract. There is vestibulocerebellar fibers. There is reticulocerebellar fibers. Now the first one, cortico-pontocerebellar pathways originate in cerebral motor premotor cortices and cerebral somatosensory cortex. It passes by way of the pontile nuclei and pontocerebellar tracts, the lateral divisions of the cerebellar hemispheres. Then there is olivocerebellar tract from inferior olive, all parts of the cerebellum. Then vestibulocerebellar fibers, they go to the flocculonodular lobe and vestigial nucleus of the cerebellum. Then reticulocerebellar fibers, they do go to the vermis. You can see the presence of different type of pathways in the cerebellum. Then the efferent pathways from the periphery, dorsal spinocerebellar tract, there is ventral spinocerebellar tract. The dorsal spinocerebellar tract enters the cerebellum through the inferior cerebellar peduncle and terminates in the vermis and intermediate zones of the cerebellum on the same side as its origin. The signals in the dorsal spinocerebellar tracts they come mainly from muscle spindles, Golgi tendon organs, large tactile receptors of the skin and joint receptors. All these signals apprise the cerebellum of the momentary status of muscle contraction, the degree of tension on the muscle tendons, the positions and rates of movement of parts of the body, the forces acting on the surfaces of the body. Then the ventral spinocerebellar tract, it enters the cerebellum through the superior cerebellar peduncle, but it terminates in both sides of the cerebellum. The ventral spinocerebellar tracts are excited mainly by motor signals arriving in the anterior horns of the spinal cord from the brain through corticospinal and rubrospinal tracts. The internal motor pattern generates uh, generators in the cord itself. The ventral pathway tells the cerebellum which motor signals has uh, have arrived at the interior horns. This feedback is known as the efferent copy of interior motor drive. So you're all supposed to know what is this efferent copy. You can see now the 
vestibular cerebellar afferent tracts uh, the vestibular impulses from the labyrinths direct and via vestibular nuclei dorsal spinocerebellar that, that is giving the proprioceptive and exteroceptive impulses from body ventral spinocerebellar proprioceptive and exteroceptive impulses from body cuneo cerebellar proprioceptive impulses especially from head and neck tecto cerebellar auditory and visual impulses via inferior and superior colliculi impulses from motor and other parts of the cerebral cortex via pontine nuclei olivo cerebellar proprioceptive in, uh, input from whole body via relay in inferior olive output signals from cerebellum deep cerebellar nuclei and efferent pathways on each side of cerebellum there is presence of three deep cerebellar nuclei which are the dentate nucleus interposed nucleus and vestigial nucleus now all the deep cerebellar uh, nuclei they receive signals from two sources now what are these two sources they are the cerebellar cortex the deep sensory afferent tracts to the cerebellum each time an input signal arrives in the cerebellum it divides and goes in two directions first is directly it goes to one of the cerebellar deep nuclei or to a corresponding area of the cerebral cortex overlying the deep nucleus then a fraction of second later the cerebellar cortex relays an inhibitory output signals to the deep nucleus all input signals that enter the cerebellum eventually end in the deep nuclei in the form of initial excitatory signals followed a fraction of a second later by inhibitory signals from the deep nuclei output signals leave the cerebellum and are distributed to other parts of the brain you can see how the input is coming from spinal cord cerebral cortex vestibular system um inferior olive and they are going to go over there either to the cerebellar cortex or to the deep cerebellar nuclei and ultimately going to go to the brain stem thalamus midbrain and later they are going to go to the spinal cord and um uh, cerebral cortex so this is just the simplified cerebellar circuitry now the major efferent pathways leading out of the cerebellum and consists of the following the first one is vermis a pathway from vermis passes through the vestigial nuclei to medullary and pontile regions of the brain stem this circuit functions in close association with the equilibrium apparatus and brain stem vestibular nuclei to control equilibrium as well as in association with the reticular formation of the brain stem to control the postural attitudes of the body then the intermediate zone of cerebellum a pathway the interposed nucleus to ventrolateral and ventro anterior nuclei of the thalamus the cerebral cortex midline structures of the thalamus the basal ganglia the red nucleus and reticular formation of the upper portion of brain stem this complex circuit helps to coordinate mainly the reciprocal contractions of agonist and antagonist muscles in the peripheral portions of the limbs hands fingers and thumbs lateral zone of the cerebellar hemisphere a pathway passes to the dentate nucleus next to the ventrolateral and ventro anterior nuclei of the thalamus cerebral cortex this pathway plays an important role in helping 